Well, hello folks, and uh, welcome to this uh, short episode of Adventure Bike Pilot. You may notice I'm not on an adventure bike. Uh, this is my, uh, if you remember, uh, just before I went to Scotland last year, I bought a Blackbird. A Honda CBR 1100 Super Blackbird. And this is it, uh, 2002. And uh, to be honest with you, I think this is only about the third or fourth time I've taken it out <laughs> since I bought it. Uh, I bought it out of nostalgic reasons. My, uh, I used to have one of these in black many moons ago before I switched to the BMW. Uh, and I really missed it, but uh, I don't think I could use this as my everyday bike now or my touring bike. Uh, I think I moved on a little bit <laughs> in uh, in dynamics from this bike, but it's great to get on it. I can't go too ballistic at the moment. The set has been sitting up for a, for a while. The air pressure is a little low in the tires. Uh, I stopped into the local petrol station, but I've got to bring change with me. And like all petrol stations these days, they uh, try to charge you now for bloody air. Ridiculous. But. Uh, yeah, it's phenomenal, absolutely. Uh, it's still a psycho hose beast of a bike. But what I would say is, like, this is a 180 brake horsepower motorbike, or at least it was in its day. It's probably lost a few of those horses now. But uh, certainly my new GS1250 uh, feels an awful lot quicker off the mark from not to 60. Maybe even not to 100, but I'd say ultimately this would uh, win out on the uh, top speed game and would eventually catch it. But uh, this is a powerhouse of a bike, it's an absolute powerhouse. This one's got its uh, standard exhaust on it, so it's very quiet actually. The, uh, the original one that I had had a set of Micron race exhaust on it, my Jesus. It, uh, it would wake the dead. But uh, I just wanted to do a quick video. Uh, just to keep people up to date. For, for number one is, uh, I've just passed the uh, 700 subscribers to the channel, which is phenomenal. Thank you so much for subscribing and watching. I very much appreciate it. There's an awful lot of work that goes into uh, putting all of this together, so it's nice to know that you know the numbers are growing and people are watching. Obviously, my next target is to get to a thousand. So, absolutely, if you're a first-time watcher, please like and subscribe. And hello from Ireland. And then, secondly, uh, if you're following me on uh, Facebook, you will have seen that. Uh, I've just recently purchased my new 2021 Sasko wall planner uh, to start planning for next year. Because because of this uh, COVID-19, basically the entirety of this uh, this year's calendar got basically wiped. I got a couple of trips in between lockdowns, but overall the uh, most of the year has been gone, which means I've had very little content in terms of vlogging to put up. So it's been a bit of a killer. So uh, normally I buy that calendar in and around December and take the Christmas holidays then to sit down and start planning routes and trips and all for the following year. But to try and cheer myself up, I thought I'd do it a bit early this year. So it's uh, it's gone up already. The problem we have is that we're still in the depths of the second wave of this bloody COVID thing. And it's highly unlikely that things will be back to normal, certainly within Q1 or Q2 even of next year. Even if there's a vaccine available by the end of this year, by the time they roll it out and get it out to everybody, I tell you, looking at the second part of the year. So uh, I think we're going to be in this for the long haul, which is a pain. But uh, the only one I have that's uh, certain on the, the calendar so far is my Scotland trip, seeing as we didn't get to do it this year. So that's going up already. So I have to sit down now and start thinking about 
you know, between the travel I need to do for work, holidays for myself and the missus, uh, what can I squeeze in then in terms of biking trips for the vlogging routes? Um, when can I go? Where to go? So, you know, I'm open to any suggestions, anyone who's uh, got a good idea of somewhere new, maybe around Ireland or the UK or, I don't know, it's hard to tell now with uh, what's going to happen on Covid. So yeah, I just thought I'd uh, touch base with just to let you know what's happening and to say thank you for following and watching. Uh, and I'm going to take this uh, Blackbird out now and uh, try and get some air in the tyres and put a bit more fuel in the tank. And uh, blow off the cobs with, cobwebs off her before uh, the season ends, you know. It's a shame that I haven't got to get this out uh, between the crappy weather we've had, Covid locking down everything, work. I just haven't got her out as much as I would have liked to have gotten her out. And uh, I've put on some of the new fairings. I did buy some new fairings on it. Uh, I've put on, here's somebody coming up behind me here. I've put some of those on. Um, but uh, not all of them. I have to finish that off. So yeah, so uh, I'll see if I can get some air and petrol done here. I might check in a bit later before I get home, but uh, I'll talk to you later. A few moments later. So we got a bit of air in the tires and some fuel. Oh yeah. This thing is quick. And smooth, I can't get over how smooth it is. The N94 versus the boxer engine. I've got the new boxers all there, very smooth. Oh, it's such a difference having a bit of air in the tyres, I tell you. Yeah, I have to be careful. <laughs> I don't drive this too often and it's a completely different riding position than the GS. So it's totally alien to me now. Totally. <laughs> I can't believe I used to drive one of these every day. Getting old! Getting old! <laughs> oh yeah, there's that hypersonic feel to it. That I remember. I was up in sixth gear. Bloody hell. Uh, the one thing this is missing is uh, uh, in the clocks is the gear display telling you what gear you're in. See, that's how you get this techno techno stuff you get uh, complacent you get so used to being able to just see what gear you're in rather than feel it And the difference in the brakes, much softer or not as uh, full on as the GS. The difference between a, what, I suppose a 17 or 18 year old bike now, uh, and the new 20, uh, well mine's a 2019, so that's uh, a big difference. Wow, it's a lot of fun though. I must see if I can get a set of microns for this. 
pretty hard to find. I'm not sure, right? Did I hear somewhere that Micron had gone out of business a few years ago? <laughs> oh my god, no wonder I sold it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a naughty bike, that's a law breaker. Wow. Yeah, the GS is, is definitely sharper. But this is just, it's just a, uh, it's just gargantuan. I feel like you're strapped to a, a ballistic missile. Whew. Cool the jets here. Trim, we're coming into the historic town of Trim. So oh, we'll do a bit of a loop and then head back out. Because this is the Kilcock to Trim Road. I know I've said it loads of times before, but these are great fun, these roads. They're wide and they're sweeping, and usually there's not a lot of traffic on them. But uh, if you get the opportunity, uh, you take the Kilcock to Trim, or Kilcock to Summerhill, Summerhill to Trim, Trim to Navin, and then Navin to Slane Road. It's, they're just phenomenal roads. Uh, if you're into your sports bikes, uh, they're great fun. So we'll loop out by the uh, by the castle, and then we we'll go back down the road that we've just come. Great sound off these things. It's just beautiful. You know, uh, when you hear it, you know it means business. Look at this idiot. Particularly if you're to put on a sports race exhaust onto it. Um, although I've been, I've been toying with the idea. Let me just get through this junction. Toying with the idea of getting a Hayabusa. Uh, it's a bike I've always wanted to have. I did have one. The older model, the original Hayabusa, but I didn't have it very long. I only had it a month or two. I was I bought it in to sell it on, but I always loved the, the new modern Hayabusa, uh, and I was thinking, toying with the idea of getting like a 2008 one. Uh, you can get them for relatively cheap, but it leaves me with a dilemma on this then. Uh, number one is the the cost, how to finance it, um, and then number two is um, what well, smell of garlic cooking in here, gorgeous. And where would I put it? Because I don't have the space in the shed. The two bikes basically take up the entirety of my shed, uh, and I don't want to leave it outside. Uh, so it would possibly mean that I'd have to, uh, there's the old castle, might recognise it from Braveheart and a few other movies, but uh, it would leave me with the, uh, the dilemma of maybe having to get rid of this, and I really don't want to, uh, like I said, this, uh, this bike has an awful lot of nostalgic sentiment to me, uh, so I don't want to get rid of it. Oops. I'm so not used to this type of thing anymore. But, um, yeah, I'd have to get rid of this to make room for the Hayabusa. And the reason I want, was thinking about the Hayabusa, it's a bike I've always wanted to have because it's kind of the next level on from, from the Blackbird. There's always been a competitive thing between the Blackbird and the Hayabusa, but I think in terms of power and 
and all of that type of speed and all of that stuff. I think the Hayabusa uh, became the clear leader. Uh, and it's a much more modern bike. The clocks and all on it are savage looking. Um, but it would be a hard pill to swallow to get rid of this. Now we're back on this road again. Hopefully there's less traffic going this direction. Oh, I spoke too soon. Yeah, definitely the GS is quicker. Definitely sharper and quicker. Which surprises me. But the thing about the GS is that it, it does top out eventually. Particularly if you're carrying a lot of luggage, the front end goes light. Now the new one is nowhere near as bad as the old one. The old air-cooled will go quite light off the front if you're on the motorway doing high speed, allegedly. The new one is vastly improved. It has a steering dampener in it. Um, and that's the thing about this is at high speed this thing is solid as a rock very solid like sometimes you could be doing very high speed allegedly and uh, you don't realize actually how fast you're going what to you might feel like 50 60 miles an hour is usually considerably faster because the bike is just so stable but yeah this it doesn't feel as quick as it did back in the day. But it's still it's still a phenomenal yoke. Like I've said it before, this thing would still outpace most of the supercars on the road. I find I'm going up through the gears too quick. I'm not giving it the full range. Not giving it its full range. It's a bit better. Is solid I mean that felt very solid it's uh, it's just planted I could break the space time continuum. Okay, cool it down here now. Oh, it'd be so hard to get rid of this. But the Hayabusa will be much sharper and quicker. I'm not sure about how it compares in handling, if it'd be a bit more agile, because the Hayabusa is a bit longer. But I would love to try one. Like a 2008, the new, the, the, the V2 version of it. And I heard that they were discontinuing them. Although I saw a video last night with somebody taking out a 2020 one. Which surprised me because I thought about a year ago they just stopped them. 
not many companies are making these big, you know, hyper bikes anymore, you know. And I went all over uh, France and Switzerland and all of my Blackbird. You know, it's, it does everything, you know, it's, uh, it'll commute, it'll tour, it'll go like a ballistic missile, it's, uh, it's a very versatile bike. You know, something like an R1 is a phenomenal machine, but it only does one thing, go really, really fast around corners. The, uh, the engine braking sound off this when you're coming down. The noise of it. It certainly makes head turns. Heads turn, not head, head turns. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very different experience cornering on something like this. The, your, the riding position, your head is forward, your arse is behind you. Your legs are up, you're like you're in the, the fetal position. I'm so used to such an upright driving position on the, uh, on the bike. It's just bizarre, it's totally alien to me now. And I'm not the greatest of corner at the best of times. So cornering on something like this, it's, it's fun. See what I mean? Oh, 20 years ago I just shot through the middle of that traffic, doing the old lane split and stuff. Trying to mature a bit now. I have got a broken white line. so much fun. Alright, so that's enough of me uh, bending the rules a little. I think you get the idea that these things uh, are still psycho hose beasts of machines. I just thought I'd give it a run out before uh, the really crappy weather starts. I believe from tomorrow onwards it's supposed to be absolutely piddling with rain. And we're, uh, we're into October now so uh, so the weather's about to take a turn for the worst. So it'll be very rare that I'll be taking this bike out over the next six months. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Talk to you later.